Wake up, wake up, wake up. It's the Mecca Media Morning Show. Good morning to you. That's what I be trying to tell people, Brother Kofi. How come people don't get what I'm trying to say? You have to wake people up with that wake up. Speaking about waking up, it's like you woke up and lost, left some hair at sleep time. You cut your hair. Yeah, man. Well, you know, my hair was not for show. That's why I was keep my crown covered. So uh, it was it's a religious thing. And... Uh, when my uncle passed and I was obligated to go to his funeral, which I don't, didn't, you wouldn't do otherwise, uh, yeah, I had to cut the hair because all those, that energy I feel you. went into my life. Yeah, about to go some so new energy. Had to, had to clear it all out, clear it all out. So what are we speaking about today, bro? Uh, today, well, you know what? We're going to talk about the topic of the month. We're going to talk about Kobe Bryant. Well, all right. Okay? So everybody's talking about Kobe and we all felt the shock when his helicopter dropped from California to New York City, from Long Beach to Long Island. Everybody felt the shock when that helicopter dropped. Now, for myself, my cousin called me. Now my cousin, he didn't call me, he called my mama, because he always called my mama. He'll call three or four times in a day. And this time when he called, I answered the phone because I know where mom was. I said, I'll, I'll pick up the phone and then I'll pass it on to her. Well. He starts telling me this lie about, hey, man, well, you heard about Kobe Bryant dying. I'm like, come on, man. Why are you lying to me? I know you lying. Kobe ain't dead. And I thought he was talking about because LeBron had just broke his record like a few days prior. I thought that's what he was talking about. But he kept going on and on about Kobe dying. So I looked it up. I found out he was, he, he was not lying that time. Uh, and so... It, it, I, I could feel it. And I wasn't even really a fan of Kobe's, but I could feel for him and his family. So we sent our, our, uh, our prayers out to Kobe's family um, and friends and relatives, okay? It was a terrible thing that happened. But here's the thing. In 2000, 20 years ago, we had another stellar human being dropped from the sky like that. Another star dropped from the sky. And that star was from right around here up in Cleveland, Ohio. And matter of fact, as I was talking to my cousin, I found out he went to school with this person. I had no idea. I've been talking to him. This is my, one of my closest cousins. And we never, I, we never knew that we both had a relationship with this person at different times in their history. So I'm talking about Rudy, Rudolph Perry Jr. Rudolph Perry Jr. was one of was a vice president of Black United Students up here at Kent State University during the period of time when the Black United Students founded Black History Month and celebrated the first Black History Month ever at Kent State University in conjunction with IAAA, otherwise known as the Institute for African American Affairs and the Human Relations Center. So two Kent State professors, Dr. Crosby and Dean Milt Wilson, along with the Black United students led by Erwin Blunt and Rudolph Perry, were instrumental in the founding of Black United Students. And I don't want to forget my brother and colleague, um, Ibrahim al kafiz because he was one of the, the um, what's the word for it, um, the engines that powered that whole thing, that made that whole thing come together. So these are some of the people that were uh, involved in this process. It wasn't just one person. And contrary to popular belief, Black History Month did not evolve from Negro History Week. Contrary to popular belief, white folks didn't give us the shortest month of the year to celebrate Black History Month in. That was something that we decided on. We took uh, the lead from Carter G. Woodson. But you see, Black History Month and Negro History Week are not the same thing. They're not even a, one of them is not even an evolutionary phase of another one. It's like a whole separate thing. Because when you we went from Negro to Black in the 60s, that was a revolutionary move. Negro History Week was founded and uh, promoted primarily in segregated schools in the South. 
Northern schools weren't celebrating Negro History Week. Even if they had a totally black population, they typically were not celebrating Negro History Week. So when we came in with Black History Month, it was after 1954, it was after the, um, the, the, the school, it was during the school integration push, that's when we founded Black History Month. That's what made it so revolutionary because we were coming, black, black, just the word black period was related to black power, uh, black history, um, black love. Yeah, black love, <laughs> black love. But man, but that black power piece was, was, was crucial because, oh, the Black Panthers, okay? And those were all revolutionary ideas, revolutionary concepts, revolutionary organizations. So bringing that to a college campus, bringing that to a local high school like Ravenna High, that caused riots at Ravenna High. It caused riots in high schools in Cincinnati and Columbus. Rioting went on. And when I say riots, it wasn't the black students rioting. This was the white student population that rioted. That's who was rioting because they did not want to have to deal with anything having to deal with black nothing. So, in conclusion, Black History Month was just as different from Negro History Week as a Cadillac is to a Mercedes. Yeah, they're both cars, they both have four wheels, they both get you, you know what, let me make it even more clear. A Mercedes to a Chevy, okay? Listen, a Mercedes to a Chevy. Two totally different vehicles. They both have four wheels, they both get you where you're going, but one of them you riding in style. One, you might just go that extra mile. So, in conclusion, we're gonna be celebrating the 50th anniversary of Black History Month, the founding of Black History Month at Kent State University in Cartwright Hall, three to six p.m. February 15th, free to the public. Be there or be square, and don't forget to check us out at www.blakfacts.org as well as africanhiphop.com. Dropping that bomb. <laughs>